Um, so Christmas, Luke, <clears throat> the second chapter, starting at verse 8. This is a portion of the Christmas story that you've heard a bazillion times. And I want to take a portion of this and I want to preach today, if you'll allow me. Luke, the second chapter, starting at verse 8, and it says this. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in a field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. And there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This will be a sign to you that you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothing and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about our worship. Uh, we have... So much in our life that, listen, I'm a worshiper. That's just who I am. That's just the way God created me. I feel like I have so much to thank Him for that, that whenever I get into church, I just, I'm a worshiper. That's just who I am. And so many times whenever there's things uh, in, in a church setting that don't really affect you because, because I'm a worshiper, so it does this, this, this decision to worship every Sunday morning or in your life, it, it really is one of those things that I don't struggle with. So oftentimes I overlook it, and oftentimes I just think that the congregation as a whole understands worship and just chooses not to. And this week as I was reading over the Christmas story, God just kept bringing this part back to me and saying, talk to the people about my worth. Talk to the people about the worth that I deserve, the worship, the worship that I deserve. Talk to the people about my worth. So today, I want to talk about God and who He is. And, and, and at this moment where the angels step out and boop, 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 here comes Jesus, what happens? A multitude of heavenly hosts stand there and sing glory to God in the highest. At His appearing, at His, at his first announcement of His birth, what happens? We worship Him. And our worship today is, is, is so often misguided. Jesus, whenever he's fasting, before he launches into his ministry, the enemy, Satan, comes to him and begins to tempt him. After he's been out there uh, uh, fasting for 40 days, the enemy comes and tempts him. And he says, if you'll just worship me, I'll give you everything you can see. There are powers at work that are trying their hardest to steal our worship from who the worship belongs to, who the worship belongs to. There are powers in place trying to get your focus off the things that, the, that, that don't deserve your focus and get your focus off of Him and put Him on those things. There are things in our life that, that we struggle with and things in our life that we look at and we put so much passion or enthusiasm into those things and, and, and God's Word calls those things idols. We were created from the very beginning. Our, our, our nature, our human nature is to worship. That's who we are. We are creatures to worship. That's what God has created us for. And yet we build these idols in our life. We put these things up on pedestals. We, 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 we focus so, so vastly on things that, that take our eyes off of who He is. Listen, I'm green. Go green. Yes, I, I, I'm totally for going green. But I am so frustrated with people who focus so much on the earth and, and protecting the earth that they don't protect the word of God and who he is. And they focus on the creation and forget about worshiping the creator of the creation. You know what I'm talking about? Go green. I mean, I'm serious. Like, yeah, let's do this thing. Let's, let's save God's earth. Absolutely. But... At the same time, I'm not going to spend all my time worshiping a, a creation. I'm going to spend time worshiping the creator of the creation. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 All right, just making sure. Isaiah got up here last week and translated. Y'all were amen and him to death. Amen! Woo! Uncle James got up here two weeks ago after I preached and y'all amen him to death. And then I get up here and y'all go. Amen? Amen. Hey, you know what I'm talking about, right? Some of us, we get so focused on our religious traditions. Ooh. We get so focused on the things that we thought were so important. The things that, to us, we worship. Mm. Maybe for some of you, it's the music. 
or the ones singing the music or the style of music. I had someone quit church this week because they said we sung too much. True story. True story. Said we sung too much. Again, I, I was blown away and didn't really know what to say. And I say to you today that I have people quit church because we don't sing church hymnals. I have people quit church because we don't sing the style of music they like. And I'm saying that's fine. God bless you. Go, go find a church that sings what you like. But you cannot let the worship be for the style of music that's right. being sung. Right. The worship comes whenever you're worshiping the one who created the stars and the moon and the sky. Amen. Amen. We get focused on religious traditions, how things are supposed to be, how things are supposed to look, what things are supposed to smell like and, and, and look like and feel like and, and taste like. And then we get frustrated and, and lose our worship whenever those things don't fall exactly into place. And God says, come into my house, enter into my courts with thanksgiving and into my, and, and then into my gates with thanksgiving and into my courts with praise. It doesn't matter what's going on up here on this stage. This is His stage and everything that flows from it is for Him and His worth, His worth-ship. So we come into this place to worship Him for who He is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. I'm going to through this. Okay. Philippians, here's what Paul says. Paul says, listen, guys. If anybody should boast in themselves, it's probably me because I'm pretty awesome, dude. This is what Paul says. <laughs> Seriously, this is what he's about to say. I'm going to read it to you. He says to the church at Philippi, he says, if anybody should be able to boast, it's me. I'm pretty awesome, dude. I've done some pretty amazing things. I deserve to be worshipped. Here's what he says. Philippians 3, starting at verse 2. He says, Beware of dogs and evil workers. And beware of mutilation. That has to do with the circumcision that he's talking about next. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in your flesh. Don't make yourself an idol. We as this American culture have, has so put us up on a pedestal and made everything revolve around us. Our, our, our church services have to revolve around the people. Our church services stop focusing on Him and who He is and instead it revolves around us. And here goes what He says. Stop having confidence in you. Stop, stop having confidence in you. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone thinks you should have confidence, I have it so much more than you. Why? Circumcised on the eighth day, the stock of Hebrew, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Verse 7. But what things were gained to me? When everything revolved around me, when everything was about me, when everything was lined up just right how I thought it was supposed to go, what did that gain me? These I have counted as loss for Christ. It's all about Him and His worship and our worship to Him because He is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Isaiah 40. Tell us scripture. Isaiah 46, starting at verse 9. Remember the former things of old. I, th I think in worship, first and foremost, you have to understand who you're worshiping. You have to understand the one that you are giving the worth to. If you don't find him worthy, then it's, it's irrelevant who your worship belongs to because you don't find him worthy. So here, I'm going to give you some scriptures of worth. Isaiah 46, starting at verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and, yet, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. From, from the very beginning of time, I put things in motion in your life. I've done this for you. Saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. I like that. Amen. Circle that, underline that. Right on your arm with a sharpie. I will do all my pleasure. I'm sorry if it makes you uncomfortable. I'm sorry if you don't get it. I'm sorry if you don't understand it. I will do all my pleasure. Calling a bird of prey from the east. The man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and I will also do it. Amen. God is right.
righteous. Every decision he makes is right. We look around at him sometimes and we say, God, you messed up. God, I don't think you understood the fullness of this circumstance. I think you miscounted some of this. God, you don't understand this situation. And if you would have understood this situation, then you would have made a different decision in this situation. And God says, I know everything I'm doing and I do it for my pleasure and it's okay. I have it under control. I make right decisions. Man, that's good. Amen, preacher. Amen, preacher. Preach it. I'm crazy. Psalms 115, verse 3. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever He pleases. Mm. That's good. I stop there. That's good. Our God is in heaven and He does whatever He pleases. God will understand you. God will do what He does to me. God will understand what is happening. God says, in heaven I'll do whatever I please. Jamie, that's not a God that loves me. Why? God loves you. God is love. Just because He does whatever He pleases and then can give you everything you want, He's full of rotten breath. Doesn't mean He doesn't love you. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Mm. He does whatever He pleases. Their idols, they're the works of men's hands. They don't have mouths to speak, eyes to hear, uh, eyes to see, ears to hear, noses that they may spit, smell, hands that do the handling, feet that they may walk, nor do they mutter the things from their throat. Those who make them are like them, so is everyone who trusts in them. O oh, Israel, O oh, church, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Things made by the hands of men. Social security made by the hands of men. Job security made by the hands of men. Things in our life, 401ks that we put our trust and our hope into and they have no heart, no eyes, no ears, no hands, no feet to be able to do anything. And God says, church, trust me. Amen. Amen. Listen, I get phone calls every week. I'm so nervous about social security. And I say to those people, I'm scared to death to it. I'm nervous to it. But my God holds the universe in the palm of his hands. And guess what? He says, trust him. Amen. Not to put your hope and your trust into a system that is broken, but to put your hope and your trust in him. That's a good word. That's a good word. Amen. Proverbs. Just, just one scripture here in Proverbs. It says, verse 21, starting in verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And like rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. See, this is the God I serve. This is the reason why he is worthy of my worship. He is a God that holds the king's heart in his hands. And he turns it whatever way he wishes. This is the God that holds the president's heart in his hands. And he turns it whatever way he wishes. And we say to ourselves, I'm nervous, I'm scared, I don't understand what God's doing. God, why don't you step in? God, why don't you do this? And God's saying, trust me. Trust me. If I have the king's heart in my hands, how much more do I have your heart and your best interest in mind as well? Man. He's on the throne. Nothing will ever change that. No vote will ever change that. No, no, no cliff that we're about to fall off of will ever change that. He is king of kings and lord of lords and nothing will ever change that. We need to understand who He is, who we're worshiping. He is the one that we give all praise and glory and honor to. He is worthy. Why is He worthy? Because He holds King's hearts in the palm of His hand. He's sitting in heaven doing things as He wishes. He's holding it all and He says, trust me. He is worthy to be praised. He is the one. The second thing is this, that we need to learn to respond 
to Him and worship. Listen, I pass some of you in Walmart or in the mall or in the grocery store and I see what you do. You go, there's a the preacher. <laughs> Hurry, get in the car, get in the car, quit. I don't know what you're scared of. I'm, I'm, I'll just say, hey, it's okay. We have people in our life that we see in Walmart and the airport or the mall that we haven't seen in years. And what do we do? Oh my goodness! Johnny, is that you? I can't believe it. Come give me a hug. Oh God, I'm so good to see you. How you been? Tell me your story. Let me tell you what's going on with me, man. You look so good, man. You're so pretty. Oh my goodness. Is these your kids? Oh my goodness. And I am too. <laughs> and you spend this moment there with that person of giving them the worth that they deserve because you haven't seen them in a long time. And then we get to a church setting and the pastor's up on the front row going, Oh God, Jesus, I'm doing all of you. And you're saying, Why in the world is he acting like that? I'm just having a moment with my Savior. I'm just seeing him in the mall for the first time this morning and just having my moment with him. Maybe that doesn't make sense to some of you. Thursday night, I'm a Broncos fan. Go Broncos. They're, Thursday night, they play on TV. And listen, listen, they play on TV and listen, I get a little crazy. I'd be going, oh, come on, man, rip, blow the whistle, come on. You know, I mean, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be get crazy. And in those moments, I... I I, I think to myself, God, whenever I get there on Sunday morning, how will my, will my, will my emotions feel? And listen, there's reverence in the house of God. There has to be reverence in the house of God. We have to understand that we're coming into His presence and He's a holy God. But at the same time, we have to understand that our emotions are part of our worship to Him. Yes. And understand that sometimes you're going to cry in His presence. And sometimes you're going to want to give the international sign of surrender and throw your hands up in His presence. And sometimes you're going to want to fall on your face in His presence because that's all you can do. And people are going to look at you and say, why in the world is He crying? Listen, I watch Oprah when Oprah used to be on our crowd, Oprah. I watch Duck Dynasty and I cry. Oh, there's no joy to the world. Oh, Jesus. You got a hug and pray that dinner. That's so sweet. And I'll cry with anyone. And I come to God's presence and you wonder why I'm crying? I'm crying because I got to spend time with my Savior this morning. I'm crying because the, the creator of all the universe, listen. I'm crying because the creator of all the universe chose this moment to come and speak with me and have a moment with me. Maybe this isn't important to you, but it's important to God. And it's important in His Word over and over and over again. And you can sit here and think, oh, you're just I'm crazy Pentecostals. And I was crazy. I listen, I was Pentecostal. I was brought up Pentecostal. And there's some crazy things. My wife's first, first time going to church with me. True story. First time going to church with me. She's sitting down beside of me. God's taking up off me. And got excited and said, I'll just do the microphone until I'm running around the church. <laughs> now my wife was a good old Catholic girl. Yeah. Brought up Catholic her whole life and goes to sit with me in a Pentecostal church service and here goes what her eyes did. As she's sitting there, she went... <laughs> they took off running and she went... She looked at me and she said, I'm leaving. <laughs> I said, I don't blame you, honey. I don't blame you. I know how that... Can feel. I understand that moment of, 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 of feeling like there's something crazy going on and how that will affect someone who's never seen. But at the same time, there are still emotions involved where God says to praise Him emotionally. The last chapter of Psalms, Psalms 150 says this, praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him according to His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise Him with a lute and a harp. Praise Him with a timbrel and a dance. Praise, praise Him with string instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. But most importantly, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. I 
hearts, you eight that are in the congregation that are worshipers like me. You hear that? And you're like, yeah, woohoo! Praying, Jesus! Hallelujah! And you other 150, you're sitting there going, what in the world? I don't have a glue or a harp or a cymbal. <laughs> How am I going crazy? How crazy, man. Worship is a response to who he is. Worship is a response to seeing an old friend that you haven't seen since last Sunday, many of you. It's, it's a response to who he is and what he's done for you and to walk into his presence. Listen, the creator of the universe chose time to come and dine with us today. He is worthy to be praised. Man. We come in. We understand who He is. We understand His worth. We understand that we have to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not just a lot of spirit, because a lot of spirit's kind of crazy. Not just a lot of truth, because a lot of truth has no freedom. Gotta, gotta merge those two together and find the perfect match of spirit and truth. We understand who He is. We allow our emotions to worship Him because He's worthy to be praised. And then we understand that in that, and two or three are gathered in his name. He comes into the midst. And he is worthy of our praise. And as he comes into the midst, his presence does something to us. He comes here to meet with us and to dine with us. And, and, and in that, just as that angel spoke to the shepherds. And he says, Jesus is coming. Heavens open up. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Goodwill towards men. Unto you today, a Savior is born. The worship wasn't just for the king. The worship was for the fact that there was a Savior being born that was going to change eternity. You don't understand. Hear me, let me, let me explain it to you. Exodus 40, 34. And the cloud covered the tabernacle in the meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to even enter into the temple because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the place. In that moment of God's presence coming and resting with us, it, it pushes us in and we, we, we allow this uh, moment where we are able to interact with God in His presence. And in that, as you, as, you, as you flip over to Acts 4, 31, and then they prayed, and the place where they assembled together were shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak the Word of God with boldness. As we begin to worship God, and His presence comes into this place, it begins to transform us. It begins to do something in us. The, the worship is not for us. The worship is for Him because He's worthy to be worshipped. And then whenever he's worthy to be worshipped and we begin to allow the worship to flow freely, then he comes and he meets with us. And then whenever he comes and meets with us, his presence then transforms us and gives us a boldness to walk out of this place and take the, the, the message or the worship that we have and to take it out there into the world with the same Energy and passion and zeal for worship that we have for him here in the sanctuary to take it out there in the world. Amen. Then it goes to this. Again. Then it goes to this. Acts 2, 46. They continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread house to house, and they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God, worshiping God. And having favor with the people. Listen, that is important. That is important. It is important to have a, a community around you, a, a set of co-workers around you that you have favor with. Being a hateful Christian isn't good. Nobody wants to come to church with a bunch of hateful Christians. Right here. Listen, nobody wants to come to church with a bunch of hateful Christians. If everybody on your job is scared of you, guess what? They're not going to hear what you have to say about Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Oh man, that's good. That's free. That ain't part of what I'm saying. <laughs> Praising God and having favor with all people. 
And the Lord added to the church daily, not about growing a church, added to the church daily what? Those who are being saved. What does this mean, Pastor? It means you go from a place where you understand who He is. You respond to Him in worship because He's worthy. Because He's, 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 he's worthy of honor and glory and praise. And you respond to Him in worship. And in that, He comes and He dwells in the midst. And as He's dwelling in the midst, He starts transforming lives and giving boldness. And then you take that boldness out of this place and you go into the community where you then have favor with the people because they see your praise and your worship as you're living. They see it in your life and you praise him constantly through your life and they see that and you have favor with them so that they have a passion to see what's going on in your life. Yeah. Right. You did what? You had an encounter with Jesus yesterday? Take me to this place. And then you're able to bring them to a place where they can then meet with Him and have a transformation take place in their life where they can then take that transformation of boldness and go out into the world and they can then gain favor with the people and they can speak praises to God into their life and then those people can then be added to the church. That's how they added to the church daily, those who are being saved. We got all you guys saved, and all you guys, all you did was just sat here saved. It's not going to be long before the church is going to stay exactly this size. But when people start getting saved, and they start bringing their unsaved friends into the church, and those people start getting saved, they start bringing their unsaved friends into the church, those people start getting saved, and then all of a sudden you got a church full of people that just gave their life to Jesus. The presence of God has transformed them. <clears throat> and in that transformation, they're then able to go gain favor with the people and speak praises into their life. And allow God to add to the church daily those who are being saved. Amen. Acts 16. It doesn't stop there. Acts 16. Verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. And singing praises or hymns to God. And the prisoners, those around him, they were listening to what he was doing. They were listening to these two men who were latched up and chained up and in this moment still felt it worthy to praise God. And in this moment they were listening to them and suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. In other words, let me, let me kind of explain this to you. Like I kind of did a while ago, except for all in one scripture, okay? In other words, your worship, the presence of God comes, people see you, you gain favor with them, the transformation takes place in your life. They see it, and they want the transformation to take place in their life. And here goes what happens. Keep her the prison awakening from sleep, seeing the prison doors open, suppose that the prisoner should have fled, drew his sword, and was about to kill himself. Paul called to him with a loud voice, do yourself no harm, for we are here. That's favor with the people. They see holiness. They see good people doing good things. <clears throat> and he called for a light, and he ran in, and he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out, and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your house. Yeah. Yeah. 